Hi everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and this is a special test video for my students. The goal here is to give you the basics of music theory, the way we're going to see it in class. Music theory is a massive subject with so much depth that there's entire master degrees in it. People could spend a whole life deepening and deepening their knowledge of music theory. However, what you and I are going to do right now is we're going to see the basic principles of music theory that can let you do 90% of everything that you're going to want to do in music. And to simplify everything, we've broken it down into three major levels, plus an introductory level, level zero, let's call that, where we're just going to talk a little bit about names. Right now, let's talk about names. In front of me is a piano keyboard. Notice there are white and black keys. And you can immediately forget about that because they're identical. The black keys are in no particular way different than the white keys. They're just laid out like this so that you can understand that there's a certain pattern. There's always a pattern coming back of two black keys and then three black keys. So two, three, two, three. This is something to help you orient yourself when you're just naming these keys, okay? The safest place to start with orienting yourself is on this, the key that's usually called C or Do. You look for the pair of two black ones and the one just to the left of that, that's Do. That's the Do that you learn in classical music as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Okay? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. If you study classical music, that's how you learn the names of the notes. If you study more jazz influenced or pop music influenced, you'll usually start two keys to the left, so down there, and you'll instead call them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then back to A. So what's happening on this piano is that the same pattern of notes repeats itself over and over and over again, and two notes a certain distance apart have the same name. So here you've got a C or a Do, and if you look up here, there's another one, because here are two black ones, and here's another white one. So this is a Do, this is a Do, this is a C, this is a C. We describe these as being one octave apart. But for music theory purposes, this Do, this Do, this Do, this one, this one, and that one are all equivalent. So you don't have to understand too much about all of this, all we really have to focus on is one octave, so the distance between this and this. And if you understand what's going on there, then you're going to understand what's going on all over the keyboard. So, we'll simplify our life a little bit. Now, one interesting fact is that only the white keys have names. So, yes, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do, and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. They have names. All the black keys are named relative to the white keys. So, whenever, let's say we take this, this is a G, okay? Because C, D, E, F, G. Now, to name this note, we say this is G sharp. Then this note, we say that's G flat. Now G flat and F sharp are the same note, just by a different name. You don't have to worry about what to call it. You can either call it F sharp or G flat. It's the same, it doesn't really matter. So if I wanna name every note in an octave, let me start like this. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and back to C. Now let me do the same, but describe it in terms of flats. So it's C, D, 
D flat, D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, and back to C. Pretty straightforward. Now, one of the other words that we're going to use is the distance between two notes. Let's say the distance between this one and this one. It's called either a half step or a semitone. So this is going up a half step. This is going up a half step. This is going up a half step. Going up a half step. Same as saying it's going up a semitone, up a semitone, up a semitone, up a semitone. So logically as well, two of them is a tone or a whole step. So if I go up only in whole steps, I'll go from here. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. That's a half step. So this is a whole step. So we can just see the difference between these two notes. It's a semitone or a half step. It's got a kind of a evil, sad kind of feeling to it. And the distance of a whole step. Kind of a clean sort of sound to it. So that's really all you need to know about names to get started. The distance between this and this is an octave. And then each individual note is a semitone or a half step. And you can double that and do a whole step or a whole tone. And that was level zero. Now you know the names. All right, so I said earlier that you only have to worry about one octave. So. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then you're back to the start. So twelve semitones. So there's only twelve things that we need to organize, but twelve is a lot. So what we're going to do first is we're going to choose a scale. And a scale is just a way of choosing some notes that are going to be included in our music and some notes that we're going to reject. Um, later on, everything that I say has exceptions, but for right now, what we're going to do is just divide everything into the right notes and the wrong notes. Now, there's mathematical formulas for how to do that, and they're just magic. You just have to remember them. And the main one that you have to remember is the major scale. The major scale is described in terms of steps relative to a root note. And a root note is just one note you have to choose. It's completely arbitrary. It doesn't matter which one. You have to choose a note and from there build a scale over it. And that one note that you choose is going to be the most important note in your whole song and your whole in all the music that you're going to make today. So you choose a note and then there's a certain pattern that you have to apply over it. So let's just choose C as our root note for the major scale. To construct a major scale over C, what we do is we go up two semitones, two semitones, then one semitone, then two semitones, then two semitones, then two semitones, then one semitone. With those notes, we've described the C major scale. By doing this, we know that all the notes that we're going to use have very high likelihood of sounding good together. And coincidentally, it's also C major scale happens to be the scale that contains all the white notes. So it's easy to memorize that way. But you don't have to choose C as your root note. Let's choose a different one. Let's choose G. So we're going to go from G down here to G up there. And we're going to construct the G major scale using the same pattern, the same formula. So we're going to go from G, uh, two, two semitones, again two semitones, then one semitone, 
then two semitones, then two semitones, then two semitones, and notice this up there, and then we arrive back up at G. So the G major scale includes one black note, and it's F sharp. So we name that relative to F, F sharp. So we could make a song where G is the root note, and as long as we respect the fact that, that, that we don't play this note, but this note instead, everything's going to sound pretty decent. Let's create another one, but on a more difficult root note. Let's go for F sharp as the root note. We're going to go from F sharp to F sharp, and we're going to create a scale called F sharp major. And again, we're just going to apply the same pattern. So we're going to go from our root note up two semitones, up two semitones, up one semitone, up two semitones, up two semitones, up two semitones, up one semitone. This is F sharp major scale. That's a complicated one, or at least it's not intuitive for a beginner because it has a lot of black notes in it, which just means that it's visually a little bit harder to process. It doesn't mean that it's qualitatively in any serious way different from... Now, any song can be played in any scale. So that means that if I play a song here in C, starting on C, I can do the same on starting on G. And after a very short time, you just get used to that new center. The G is the center. You can do the same on F sharp. Everything is relative in music theory. And if you start from one note, you can create the same pattern starting from a different note. Now, there are a few other scales that you can learn later on. Most notably, probably the minor scale, also the pentatonic scale, then maybe the blues scale. Those are just variations. Those are different mathematical formulas on how to arrive at which notes are correct and which notes are incorrect. But for everything that we want to do, the major scale is enough. So let's just use that for today. And that was level one. So scales. Now you know how to separate the right notes from the wrong notes. Let's move on to level two. Level two is chords. How to create a chord? What is a chord? Well, a chord happens when you play more than one note at the same time. This is when you start to create something called harmony. Harmony is what two notes sound like when they're played at the same time. And some notes have a very nice harmony, sound great together. And some notes have not so nice harmony. So some sound consonant and some sound dissonant. I'm going to play that one more time just so you get the difference. Good harmony, bad harmony. Later on, when your musical palette develops a bit more, you start to understand that there's some nuances to this and this doesn't always sound bad if it's placed in the right context. But for now, let's keep the distinctions clear. Let's say some things sound better together, more harmonious, and sometimes some things just don't sound good together. Okay, and the choices that we've made in creating a scale have already limited our palette a bit, so it's very unlikely that we're going to create super bad harmony. Let's go back to the simplest scale that we could find, which was a C major scale. Just all the white notes. It's the simplest that there is. Now, instead of 12 semitones, we're actually dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes before we get back to the first note. So there are only seven keys within, a, within our octave. And over each of these keys, we're going to create a chord. We're going to create a triad. To create a triad, what you do is you take your first note, the root note of the chord, and you take the next note up in the scale and you skip that one. Now you're at the third note of the scale. That one you hold down. 
Then you go up to the fourth note of the scale, that one you skip, and then the fifth note of the scale, that one you hold down. So, these three create a chord called the C major chord. Each chord in itself has a name called major or minor, but let's forget about that for now because it's not relevant. In fact, let's just call this today the C chord. This is the C chord. Its lowest note is the C, which we can also play in the bass, or even down here. And it all sounds amazing together. Now we can construct the same pattern over any note in the scale. So there's actually seven chords that we can play. C chord, D chord, E chord, F chord, G, A, B, and then we're back to C, which is the first chord. We can also just label them by their numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. There is no eight. I mean, eight is the same as one. Now each of these chords has its own kind of unique character. So the first one is quite a happy chord. The sixth one it's a bit of a melancholic chord. The third one, also a little bit melancholic. The fourth one's quite happy. The fifth one's very happy. And then the first one, it feels like we go back home. Each chord has its own character, and this becomes your color palette with which to create music. Notice that so far we've been playing notes up, but you don't have to do that. You can go down as well. So you can go from one, to seven, to six, five, four, three, two, back down to one. And essentially, that's all there is to level two. That's all you need to know about how to create basic chords. There are only seven chords in any scale, and you name them by numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each one of them has its own character, and you'll get to know them the more you start to use them. Now let's move on to level three, which is about chord progressions. Any song in music usually chooses a very limited number of chords around which to tell its musical story. What will happen is the beat will be playing and then you choose a sequence of chords that you just repeat over and over and over. And on top of those chords, you then play a melody, which just consists of individual notes, usually inside of the key or in the, inside of the scale that we've chosen. And the chords kind of tell us what emotions we're feeling, and it helps give the melody some context. A chord progression usually starts on the first note of the scale. So let's say for C major, it's this one. You hold this for a few beats along with the drums. So let's say one, two, three, four, and then you switch to another chord, let's say number five. Remember, number five is the G chord up here, so you go one, two, three, four, five, and over this one you make a triad, like this, by just skipping one note. So we go from one to five. So on the beat you would go one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then back to the first one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you would play a simple melody over the top of that, these chords, the chord changes, would give it a different context each time. So let me on one hand play the, this chord and then go to the fifth chord. But on the other hand, I'm going to play a little melody, just something, the most basic thing I could think of.
So notice how the same note pattern, the same note pattern when I keep playing it over and over, it feels different when the chords behind it change. That's harmony. It's also worth noting that the melody will play any notes, but usually a bass, some like a bass synthesizer or some very deep instrument, will usually only play the leftmost note of the chord, but an octave or two lower. Because that's really just because low notes, when you play multiple at the same time, they sound kind of clumped up. It's a, it's a bit messy. It's not so clear. So we usually just prioritize having only one note in the bass. And then doing the chords a little bit up higher. And then the melody, even higher. Now most chord progressions are slightly longer than the one that we just heard, because we just heard a two chord chord progression. We went from one to five, back to one, back to five. Now, that's a very basic one. Really what, what you should think of when you li listen to a chord progression is that you're doing a journey and you start the journey at home in your safe zone and then you go somewhere to make it more interesting. So let's go from our safe zone to somewhere a little bit more interesting to somewhere a little bit more interesting. Nice. And back home. What we did there was four chords. A lot of pop music is based on just simple patterns of four chords repeating over and over. So you go from one to four to six to five and back to one. So you create this feeling of tension and release where you start from a super safe place and you go somewhere where you're away from home and then you come back home. And this gives the audience the feeling that they're going with you on a journey and then that they come back after the journey to a safe place. And that gives like a feeling of euphoria and happy release. And suddenly you're telling emotional stories with your music. Congratulations. There's a couple of chord progressions that are super famous. There, there's one particular one called the four chord song, which is, which is just super famous. And it goes from, it goes from one to five to six to four and back to one. There's a band called the Axes of Awesome who do a stand-up sketch about this that I'll link in the description. It's definitely worth watching. Um, that's when you realize that really so many pop songs share the same chords. It's just really about what you do with the, the melody, the instrumentation, which instruments are playing the chords, what are their rhythms, what are their different styles and timbres that really make a song so iconic. Chord progressions are pretty common and shared amongst a lot of artists and songs. The only thing I'd like to tell you before we wrap it up here is about inversions. Inversions just means that instead of playing a chord with the, this format, the way that I've described it before, you can take any particular note, like let's say this one, and play it at a different octave, like let's say an octave below. So instead of up here, you can play it down here. So this is also a C chord because C stays the root of this chord even though we've made an inversion. That's what this is called. You can invert it again by taking this one and putting it even lower down. So this is a very inverted chord, but it is still a C chord. Now, this is a little bit of a head wreck for a beginner, but it helps because this is the first chord. Now, if I want to go to the fifth chord, instead of going up here, I can instead just move this one and this one down because this is an inverted chord of the fifth one. So I can go from the first to the fifth by just moving these two down one and leaving this one where it is. This helps pianists not having to move all over the keyboard all the time and also just makes things feel a bit more coherent because sometimes when you move up, something immediately sounds happy or triumphant and so 
Maybe I don't want it to sound happy and triumphant. I want it to sound a little bit more nuanced so I can go from there to there. Emotionally, it doesn't tell a very different story, but um, yeah, it's just something to be aware of. All right, so that's really it. That's three levels of music theory right there. So to start composing, what you do is lay down a beat, then figure out a chord progression that you like. Just choose some notes that you like. Choose, or just ra at first, just randomly select numbers. Say, say that your chord progression is going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's let's play that chord progression. Just see how that feels. Does it feel good to you? Then just layer a beat under it and then count. Say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and back. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's it. Now just choose different instruments to play those notes higher up in the octaves or lower down and smush them all together and see how they sound. The chords will determine more or less the emotional journey of your song. The instruments will determine the textures and the, and the punch and the impact of it. Will it sound like bright instruments? The same chord could be played by violins or by trumpets or by synthesizers or by the human choir, you know? So that's up to you as a producer to decide what you're gonna do. And remember, we used C major in this one, but everything can be what's called transposed up and down to start with a different root note to have a, a, a different major scale. So we could have done everything in G major just the same. It would have sounded very similar with only subtle nuances to change them. All right, that was everything from my side. I hope you enjoyed this first music theory video and that you can use it in your productions already, and that you can use it to analyze your favorite songs and to understand how they're constructed. If you want to see more like this, go to www.underdog.brussels. We're an online music school where you can learn in a structured context more about this kind of stuff, either in a bootcamp for beginners or in a deep dive for more advanced producers. My name is Oscar. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel here and peace out. Bye bye. Would you like to try making electronic music? That's what we do at Underdog Electronic Music School, based in Brussels. We offer a program called the Bootcamp Program, which is designed for absolute beginners who want to start having fun making their own music, but who don't have experience yet doing that. We run online classrooms in small groups where you and a real teacher go through 12 classes where you see from A to Z how to make electronic music and how to start having fun. You can ask any questions at any moment and you can also focus on the genres and artists that you love so that you can start making the music that you are passionate about. Check out the details on www.underdog.brussels and get in touch for a test session or to sign up for one of the classes. So, until we hear from you, see you online.